So this is storybird.com. Now, this is a free website, but there are extended features available if you do subscribe. There's also the teacher account that lets you have um, up to 150 students um, and you can manage them and upload all their usernames using like CSV files as well. So I'm going to use the free version to start with just to give you a bit of an idea. Now I've logged in and I've just gone to you and then dashboard to see my stuff. At the moment, my dashboard is blank. So I'm going to just press create. And then what you'll see is a selection of artwork. And if I scroll down, you'll see there's lots of different types. And as I keep scrolling, the page keeps extending and there's more and more artwork to look through. I can also search using tags and keywords on the side. So if I pick a certain word, uh, I can also look for recently added, for example. If I search for Apple on here, you'll see that I've got a variety of different images. Once you've found one that you like, if I go for this one here, you'll see that it's one of a number of images in that gallery, and I've got all of those there. And then I can either go back to the previous page and choose a different piece of artwork, or I can click on use this art. So if I click this one here, there's a variety of characters, and I just press use this art at the top, and then click for a story. Once you've chosen your artwork, you'll get a page here, and it tells you to write my story and to drag my artwork. Um, what you'll sometimes see is that I can move the page left and right to get more characters, and I simply drag one onto the page. If I was to drag it when it's that, it goes into the left-hand side. I can drag it to take up most of the page, or I can drag something and fill the whole page with it if I wanted to. Once you've then add, added your character, if I add my character onto here, you've then got a text box on the side where you can add your text. You can also just scroll back to get the page in the middle. At the bottom, you've got the plus to add further pages. And you can add your characters in there, or maybe like that. And again, add text onto the side there. There is a save button at the bottom. You simply press that and it will save your work. And then you can also press menu and you can either save and close it and come back to it later or press publish. When you publish, it will remind you to choose a cover so if I choose a cover store title there, and I can put my book, and it's got your name there as well. Uh, oh, let's leave it as a nickname. There we go. And you can change the color depending on your theme. And then if I go to menu and publish again, you'll see that it will take a few seconds, and it will take me through to the next option. Now it says that my cover won't appear immediately, that's fine. I can change the title and then I can choose some categories, tags and a summary for anyone who wants to look through and see my book. When I'm done, I simply press publish and then that will be sent for moderation before it appears in the public library. And you can scroll through the book there if you want as well. And at the bottom, you've got a share option and then I can link to my story and then I can also embed once the story has been moderated. If I come out of there and just show you another one, if I go to explore and choose another book, if I press the share option, the embed option is there. So I can embed this story bird into a blog or into a website. And that one there gives me the option to link directly to the book and also you can share it through Twitter or Facebook, etc., and via email. So that's a quick guide of how to use storybird.com to create some storybooks.